I'm a, I'm a computer graduate who ended up becoming an artist and started a company as a mother, right? Uh, early on, I was asked questions like, why do you think you succeed? What experience do you have? I didn't have any. I'm here with Ghazal Alat, the founder of Mama Earth. Obviously, it does not need an introduction uh, for the ones who are basically watching the video. But to get to the main point first, uh, tell us about the upcoming uh, Monasa IPO. What all should we know about it? Although she's given a very detailed press conference right now. Yeah. <laughs> um, hey, I'm Ghazal Alat. I'm the co-founder at Monasa Consumer. Uh, yes, we are going public very soon. Uh, I think three things that I would want my um, viewers to know about us as a company is one, the fact that the company is started by actually two middle class, um, you know, like people. We were also, Varun and I are also husband and wife. Um, we started this journey seven years back with our first brand, Mama Earth. Uh, we thought we were just building a baby care company, but uh, understanding the Indian consumers, understanding the cultural nuances, figuring out that <clears throat> we love a client, he mixed in coconut and fennel uh, to help babies digest better. The fact that on one of the best days of our lives, which is the wedding, we have a whole ceremony around a an ingredient. Understanding some of these cultural nuances and crafting uh, for Indians, uh, basis that uh, is what got us a lot of love. Uh, we continued to listen to our consumers while a lot of brands were selling to India. There were actually a very few brands who were crafting for India. So, Hanasa Consumer is that company which wants to craft the most loved brands for Indian consumers, keeping their skin in mind, keeping their weather in mind, keeping the cultural nuances in mind, and offer them the right kind of products. That is something that we focus on. I think uh, the second thing that I want them to know is that innovation, uh, product innovation is actually one of our strengths because all innovation at NASA happens by listening and talking to our consumers. We build technology tools which help us talk to our consumers on a daily basis. Uh, we can ask any kind of questions around what media are they consuming or what kind of product are they looking for or what is that problem that they're facing to which they don't have a solution right now. And within 24 hours, we can get anywhere between 1000 to 1200 responses from our consumers, so that's an edge that we have. Um, and third thing I would I would very strongly say is that you know we are a company which focuses on their strengths, not their weaknesses, which is where uh, marketing playbooks that we have that we perfected by building Mama Earth. We have applied the same playbooks on a brand like Dermaco, which is now a 300 crore ARR brand for us. We build the same playbooks on Aquilogica, uh, which is our third brand, which in less than 18 months has already achieved a 150 crore ARR. Using the same playbooks, we've actually scaled our acquisitions, which is B Plant and Dr. Shen. They have been growing uh, very, very strongly. Uh, so I think. This is what sets us apart from everybody else in the industry. And with the same focus on consumers more than competition is how we plan to uh, have our upcoming year grow uh, really strong like we are. So obviously, like you said, a lot based on the insights from the customers and the consumers. And in line with the three points which you made, uh, what are like you when you get into this business in 2016, right? So, what are the three things, so to say, which you realized about the beauty and skincare industry which you were not aware of before, which through your journey you really realized something like, a, oh my god, I didn't know this. Yeah. What, was, what was that like? I think very early on when we started the journey, uh, there were a lot of questions around, um, you know, how do you think you will win in this category? There have been players who existed for years and years together. What's going to be, you know, how are you going to deal with competition? That question comes still today. Uh, and I think even back then, if we would have focused on competition, we probably wouldn't have started at all. We we decided to focus on our consumers. And they are the ones who actually helped shape this journey of seven years. We're sitting here and talking about it. Right? Uh, so that's one. Uh, I think the second, uh, you know, like, we learned 
happening that came to us very soon fact that a lot of companies were talking about tier one contribution, tier two contribution, the fact that um, you know you start with a certain and I, I just realized that a lot of these geographical boundaries were in our minds. They were actually not there the consumers now. Because we started digital first, we were able to serve Japan India very quickly uh, by by operating from just one location during the year first, right? And um, even today, 46% of the contribution of our business actually comes from tier two. That is a strong indicator of India's buying potential. It's a strong indicator of the fact that some of these geographical distributions are really not why they actually do exist because this new India's consumer is actually value conscious, not price conscious. And they are they are present across tiers. So you should avoid them to just one basket. Mm-hmm. Their aspirations are the same, and it's our duty as brands to deliver to everybody who wants a proposition through various brands that we are we are offering. I think the third learning I would say uh, during this journey is the power of focusing on consumers and listening to them and innovating. Not just one brand. Mama of course saw that. Dermaco was a brand that was innovating, listening to consumers when we realized that they were looking for active based solutions uh, for its concerns like acne pigmentation and treatments like yes, it was like a size like that. So uh, we're so glad that we started with the three years back because if we wouldn't have that space would have been captured by someone else. Yavoko was actually the first brand to enter that category with those right kind of propositions, right? Uh, so I think that is the third thing that I've learned that consumer focus motivates makes you go a long way and even in the future that's the paradigm that I have that we got to and I think we've also put it into actions as a company. Each of our employees and we have like seven hundred plus now calls consumers every quarter of talks to twenty to forty to just understand, take their feedback, what are they looking for, how are they finding the products, where can we get them, what are the white schools for so that we as a company can track the right kind of solutions. Right. Salicylic acid, I don't even know if I can pronounce that correctly, whatever that is. Uh, but the last question, because I know she has to rush off, you know, with social media and uh, so many uh, sort of media, so many conversations taking place, there's a lot of things on the entrepreneurship and startups that we have discussed, a lot of questions which are asked, a lot of discussions that take place. Do you still think there are one or two or three uh, uh, sort of things which have not been spoken about enough as far as entrepreneurship is concerned or the kind of uh, journey which you sort of go through behind the scenes or anything else. Even with so many conversations taking place, is there something which, is, which you think has sort of been missed out? See, I think a lot has actually changed in the last three to four years, I would say. Uh, prior to that, yes, there were a lot of things that people were not talking about or the fact that there were so many biases that existed in the investors' mind, the founders' mind, uh, which did not, which created a lot of doubt, right? So, I come, I'm a, I'm a computer graduate who ended up becoming an artist and started a company as a mother, right? Uh, early on, I was asked questions like, why do you think you'll succeed? What experience do you have? I didn't have it. The only experience that I had was being a mother and understanding what a mother feels for her child or the right kind of products that I was looking for and the pain of not making them. Right? Um, now, had I listened to those biases and held myself back and not started, we wouldn't be having this conversation today, right? A lot of it has actually improved in the last two to three years. A lot of these biases have been broken because there are people who are setting the right kind of example. Um, and you know, even as a person today, as a founder today in this position, I would only say that if Varun and I, two middle class people, can start a company and achieve this scale in just seven years, this is the opportunity that millions of Indians should identify and take action on. Because then some of these biases, all of it we've gone through, right? A lot of people said, I'm asking you, why do you guys think you work together? 
you know, what if you split? What if the marriage doesn't work out? What happens to the business? Back then, he used to say, no, okay, you know what? You don't give us money. Don't give. That's fine. But at least that was the matter. Yeah. <laughs> right? So, like, I'm so I have to have proposal. Absolutely. Uh, <laughs> The second thing, being a woman entrepreneur in business and working with industries which are male dominated, right? Back then, uh, the entire supply chain, packaging, uh, factory, anatomy, etc., was all male dominated. Track. Being able to find your place there or being able to say that, you know what, even if I don't have that experience, I can learn and I can give you the right kind of inputs to work with you to, to create what we have today. It took a lot of time, it took a lot of convincing. I had people who left the organization with the belief that reporting into consultant doesn't make sense for them. So a lot of it happened. Uh, but I would still say that uh, we are the ecosystem, Indian startup ecosystem is evolving, is evolving really fast. We are moving on the right trajectory. We just continue. Uh, we must continue our focus on the right kind of metrics. Things are getting better. This is a much more welcoming place. Uh, a lot of vices have been, um, you know, like buried down because people have left sitting right side of the sandals. And that's the hope that I have for this team as well. I think she can write at least three books on various different <laughs> topics. But thank you so much, Yazil, for talking to us and all the best. Hey, thank you so much, Brian. Thank you. Thank you.